What's going on guys? My name is Brandon. Welcome back. If you guys have been following along with this series, you'll know that we've been doing a lot of cast iron welding lately. We recently welded some cast iron using flux core. For that repair process, we've been welding just one side. What happens if you weld both? Is it stronger or is it weaker? Today, we're going to find out. Oh, and some other good news, we're doing a giveaway, so stick around. We have a baseline already set up. Uh, it was 91 pounds that this broke at, welding just one side. I'll put a card right there. If you guys want to check that video out first, then come back to this one. Is it stronger if you weld both sides versus just one? So here's our piece of broken cast iron. We still got to prep all this and we're going to weld that back on. For wire, I'm using 30 thousandths Matheson flux coil wire. A lot of you guys have just a flux core only machine. You don't have the provision for the gas and that's what this is about using what you have to make a repair. So, you know, if you've got a budget flux core welder, we're going to show you that you can make a repair with this and it'll be a good one. It shows that our thickness is approximately 10 gauge. So now we can go set up our machine. So now we go to our handy chart on the door. Let's call it steel and you can see wire type flux core. No shielding gas required. And like it says here, it's good for windy if you're working outdoors. We're using 30 thousandths wire. We come over to 10 gauge. We can see we need to set it for 3 and 45. 3, 45. That's a good starting point for us right there. So now that we've got our welder set up in the proper settings, it's time to get everything ground down and beveled. And this is really no different than any material, whether it's cast iron or steel. You just want to make a nice bevel on the metal, as you can see right there, to give the weld metal a place to go. I don't think that came out too bad. I've got, you can see I've got a slight bevel on it. Boy, this thing's been used though. I mean, we got a lot of mileage on this thing, so the fit up is not going to be all that dandy but so as in the last video I've got three little nuts because uh, I think that this bench is going to act like a heat sink if I go to heat this up and it's sitting right on top of this surface I think it's going to want to try to draw the heat out of the pan so make a smaller contact point by having those nuts there set the pan on that and then we can heat it up and get this thing ready to weld I'm just trying to get this heated up uh, so that the temperature change, so when this is sitting at room temperature, you know, it's probably 68 degrees, say, right now. Well, as soon as you put the torch to it and you start welding on it, it goes from that temperature uh, to welding temperature, which is thousands of degrees, and that's what shocks it. And it has a tendency to want to crack. If you can heat this up, the more you can heat this up and get a little bit of heat in it, the less of a temperature swing it has to do. So, you know, if you can get this up to four or five hundred degrees, that's less of a temperature swing that this cast iron has to uh, go through its heating cycle and back down to its cooling cycle. You could also put this in the oven for, you know, until it's up to say 500 degrees and then take it out, weld it up, and then put it back in the oven at 500 degrees again and then turn off the oven without opening the door. And that is gonna be an excellent method, uh, a DIY method at home to repair cast iron. That's probably the best way, but uh, my wife freaks out when, when I start bringing uh, my workshop experiments up into the house. She gets a little upset about that, so. Happy wife, happy life, so. We'll keep her happy and we'll do it this way. <laughs> If you guys have been following along with this cast iron welding series, you'll know that what I'm trying to do right now is limit the amount of heat input that I'm putting into this cast iron. And what that'll do is that helps to prevent it from cracking. So to do that, I'll weld just a little bit, very, very short runs, half an inch or so, and then I'll peen it. Then I'll weld a little bit more, then I'll peen it again. And by peening it or hitting it with that chipping hammer, it helps to uh, remove some of the stresses uh, that are within that weld as it's cooling down. You could also use a needle scaler 
uh, that's usually air powered, but I don't have one. A chip and hammer seems to work just fine and I've had no issues whatsoever. All right, we already know this way. This pan will hold roughly 91 pounds before that handle snaps off. Let's weld the other side up and see if that makes a difference. So what I'm doing here now is I'm going over it with the torch again just to make sure that this area is nice and heated up evenly. I don't want any hot spots. I don't want any stress uh, locked into one specific area. So by putting the torch on it again, you're kind of spreading that heat out, making it all nice and even over that repair. And then I'm going back and making sure that when I do my welds on this side, uh, I'm doing the same thing as I did on the opposite side, making sure that my weld isn't any longer than a half an inch before I peen it, and then I do another weld. All right, so all in all, it's taking me about an hour to fix this. And now we're just gonna bury it in regular play sand like we did the last time. Someone said use uh, wood ash or something like that, and that sand is better for, for bigger castings, but um, you know that could be true, I don't know. I've never uh, tried wood ash. I just know that when we did the last test, we used sand, so we gotta keep everything the same with the exception of welding it on both sides. So now we're gonna let it sit overnight, and we'll check it out tomorrow. So we're in the next day, I can't wait to open this up and see it, but uh, this just reminded me of something. So here's the sand that I'm using. It's uh, Quickcrete uh, Play Sand. Well, in one of my videos, a viewer said, uh, that sand has gold in it, you should pan it. So I did a little research, and sure enough, this play sand, apparently from a certain plant, actually has uh, gold in it. So maybe at some point I might try to uh, pan it. I've never done that, I don't know. It interests me, it sure interests me a lot, but um, you know, if this happens to be the last video on this channel forever, uh, you'll know I hit pay dirt in here. <laughs> Not really, but anyways, let's check this out, back to what we were doing. All right, so usually whenever I weld cast, um, I get all kinds of nice comments. They, they're like, wow, that looks like crap. You got pinholes in it. Uh, you know, you're an idiot. But uh, cast iron welding isn't like welding mild steel. Nothing like it. It's not all about how your weld looks. It's how it holds. So, and rarely will you make a pretty weld on cast iron unless you're using a material that's uh, flowable. Like, you know, a silicon bronze, aluminum bronze. Uh... Nickel flows really nice. It's a nice wet, wettable uh, type material, but so yeah, there we are. We're repaired. We got it done on both sides, but yeah, uh, cast iron isn't meant to look pretty when it's uh, repaired. So, at least in my experience, here's the setup. I changed things around a little bit from this test to the last test, but it's all going to work out in the end. So, let me show you what I've got. I've clamped this tube to this pan. Got a chain supporting this bucket off the ground. All right, this has to do with our giveaway. This is a 50 pound bag of sand, so. That's about half the bag right now. Here we go. Yeah. All right, let's see what it did. See all this shiny metal down here? That's broken in the heat affected zone. Now, when I say heat affected zone, that's basically like a lot of it at the toe of the weld, basically. 
right at the edge of it. Here, you can see that's all shiny cast. That actually broke the cast, not in the weld. So the weld actually held. It didn't break where the weld was. It actually broke at like the toe of the weld. Oh, it's heavy. Guys, that's insane. 114.6 pounds or 51.982 kilograms before it breaks. Wow, I didn't expect that. Let me get this out. Before we go too far. Don't let me forget, this has to do with the giveaway. So I'm going to set that right there. Giveaway. So what did we figure out after doing that test, guys? I'm completely blown away. So what we figured out is that flux core is a viable repair on cast iron. And if you weld both sides, it increases it drastically, I think. I mean, we increased it 23 pounds. We went from 91 pounds by welding it on one side to 114 pounds by welding it on front and back. So, you know, if you can get to it, Weld it on both sides if you need it to be strong. That is the test right there that proves that welding on both sides makes a difference. So the giveaway, you guys probably want to know more about that. So this manifold here, we've done some testing on it, was repaired using Muggy Weld welding rods. And it was one of the first cast iron videos I did, I believe, in this series or close to the first one. Well that video has got a lot of interest. It's got a lot of likes, a lot of comments, and a lot of views. In about five months that video has got around 950,000 views. To celebrate 1 million views I want to do a giveaway. I want to give away some of that muggy weld welding rod to one lucky winner. All you got to do to be eligible for it is go to that video. I'll put a card up here. If the card doesn't come up it'll be down in the description of this video. Go in there, comment to me what you would use those muggy weld rods for. What are you going to repair for a piece of cast iron with it? I want these rods to go to somebody that wants to do some repairs on cast iron or that has something that's broken that they want to repair. Somebody who can find this useful. And if you like that video, I'd appreciate you giving it a like. That's all you got to do. It's that simple. When that video reaches 1 million views, I'm going to pick one lucky winner at random based on the comments and we'll send you off a package of those Muggy Weld welding rods. Easy as that. I want to thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for tuning in. If this is something that you like, uh, maybe give a comment or give a thumbs up. Uh, I appreciate you guys watching. I hope that you're interested in watching these as interested in I am as doing them. So if you want to find out what I'm working on before it even makes it up to YouTube, you guys can catch me on Instagram and on Facebook. I got the links down below if you guys are wondering about any of the tools or any of the equipment or materials I'm using. Links are down below for that as well. Thanks guys. Have a good day. Stay safe. I'll see you next week. Bye.